We also use this for the idea of temperature. So in this case, this cityscape in the bottom looks almost like there is a furnace underneath. There is a lot of activity. There is a lot of manufacturing being done there. And as we go towards the top, towards the sky, we then project atmospheric perspective into that to make it seem even further and further away. Split complementary harmony is a combination of triadic and complementary harmony. You use split complementary harmony when you want, largely, the uh, sense that you get from a complementary harmony, but you want to expand one end of that complement. So in this case, we have a blue violet in here, blue greens in here, and a yellow orange in here. And as I'll show you in a few minutes, this is probably our most popular version of split complementary harmonies, those three colors. Uh, some of that's happening here. We have a blue and a blue green and a red. Uh, we have something similar here, but here we're actually concentrating on the red. So here we have a red orange and a yellow orange against a green. But there's a lot of desaturation here, so this is not a classic example of this. Here we have a red orange and a yellow and a, a violet. This, uh, which is an often used split complementary harmony scheme, we have a yellow and a green seen against a purple. The complement of purple on the subtractive color wheel is actually yellow-green, not yellow or green. So these tend to split the complement of this color and give you more range in one end. And that is the, the most succinct way I can try to describe this. This is the exact same color palette as the painting I just showed you, with the exception of this very important tulip. Uh, but other than that, it is the same color palette. This is the color palette I began with. This is yellow orange, blue violet, and blue green. There's our blue green, our blue violet, and our yellow orange. This is the color palette that we see next to the water very often. The combination of water, sky, and sand or dirt. Uh, this is a very almost in your face version of it, but uh, it certainly does help us understand why these colors tend to work together this way. This is an unusual painting, uh, and I think the best harmony I can use to describe this is split complementary. But we have uh, very soft yellow greens that tend to complicate it in here. Uh, this is a very strongly delineated split complementary harmony, and this is a softer one. But uh, I was just saying that split complementary harmonies are things that you see around water a lot. We have a blue sky, and the sky is usually blue-violet, not blue-green, usually. Uh, we have blue-green water, and then we have the, the color of stone in the buildings. That is true here, too. And it's true in more naturalistic settings, the things that do not have so many man-made structures in them. In fact, I sometimes wondered if the popularity of this particular harmony is really based, as it is so strongly here, uh, on what life is like at the, at the edge of the ocean. Blue-violet, uh, excuse me, this is a closer one, blue, uh, this is almost violet, and blue-green, and then we have oranges and yellow oranges in here. Double complementary harmonies are two pairs of opposites, and it's as simple as that. It's not a very complex thing. If you're going to use them, as Nick Pugh did here, concentrate on one color. In this case, Nick concentrated on the green. The complement of the green is red, but the red is there just to allow the green to really sing. And then we have a sort of yellowish color and a violet color. This is our second pair of complements in here. And they are not as important as the first pair, so don't use 25% of four colors. If you're going to create chaos if you try to do that. In this case, uh, the sergeant painting, we have double complements. Uh, we have a green and some red, but not a great deal of red, and we have this blue, violet, and yellow, orange. This is a better example because it really makes the point better. We have a pair of complements back here in the mountains, and we have a pair of complements here in the foreground. While doing research for this DVD, I looked at a lot, many, tens of thousands of old paintings, and realized, although I've been teaching color theory for 17 years or longer, that this was the dominant sense of harmony in the 19th century for landscape paintings, especially. Double complementary harmony is almost the definition of 19th century harmony.
This was how nature was supposed to look, two sets of complements. And the foreground is almost always red and green, and the background is almost always a blue, violet, yellow, orange. There are certainly exceptions to this. But this is the way that, that paintings were seen to be uh, perceived at that time. This is the way that landscape was perceived. And this is this idea of harmony, a word that we get from the world of music, is uh, what paintings are supposed to do. They were supposed to give you a harmonious sense of beauty. Now, this is much older, but it is still two sets of complements. I have a blue, violet, yellow, orange in here, and I have a red and uh, green in here. Uh, this is this is more delineated, more more exacting than most paintings of its period, and it's a somewhat more advanced. It's almost a little bit modern. Uh, same painter, using a similar palette. Alphonse Mucha again. This is a double complementary harmony, and this he had a bigger printing budget, so he could afford to do it here, as we are seeing here also. Uh, this is strongly delineated. We are not seeing much of one color mixed into another one, and that's probably one of the uh, unusual things about this painting. There's a coloring book quality that sash is red violet, this is yellow orange, this is green, and do not let any reflected light get in the way. Um, here we see two, two sets of, of complements, but they're not that strong. This orange makes the blue make more sense, and uh, this and this are greens. There's an exception though. This looks like it was intended to be a yellow and when you start neutralizing a yellow it can rapidly turn to green so the perception becomes green when you do that. Pre-Raphaelites use this harmony all the time but then again they were 19th century painters they were just simply using more, more saturated colors when they when they worked. This is based on two sets of complements. The complements are red, excuse me, here we go, red and green, and then also blue and orange. The same thing is true in this. These are supposed to be two different views of Rome, current day Rome and antique Rome. Landscapes, again, will often lead us to double complements. This is much more uh, decidedly a double complement. Our second pair of complements, much more subtle, is in the foreground down here. Um, this is a 20th century painting. Uh, and we see the double complements much more clearly. You can see that areas are devoted to these colors in a very clear way. In fact, here we have very strongly delineated shadows that are the complement of the area around them. And then this tree trunk and, the, and this grass are also a set of complements. Monet, a major colorist, loved looking at what light does to local color, and this is a really strong double complementary painting. In fact, everything you might expect from a double complementary painting can be found here. Uh, this is true here. Our foreground is red-green. Our background is uh, yellow-orange, blue-violet. And over and over again, we will see this. This gives you a very strong sense of completion. In a painting. It feels like you have captured an entire world of color when using these two colors like this. Notice here we have reds and greens where the sun is lit, and here we have oranges and blues largely in the shadow area. That goes directly against what we are told light does in low light situations and bright light situations. Normally, bright light will illuminate more blues and oranges, and low light, shadow light, will illuminate more greens and, and reds. Uh, this is a little bit more artificial in that the, the wall on the background is meant to be a local color and light does not influence it all that much. And this is certainly a little bit more modern than what we have been looking at. Uh, William Merritt Chase's blue kimono uh, is blue set off by orange and yellow set off by some of the blue violet in here and some of the blue violet in here. Uh, I didn't say that right. There we go. Green and red and then blue and violet. Um, could have done that one a little bit better. It is unusual to find triple complementary harmonies. I tend to avoid them when I teach because they are so hard to find. But while doing research for this, I found a number of examples of this. So here we have a violet and a yellow. We have a red and a green. And we have a blue and an orange. And they're almost paired together here and here, here and here, and here and here. 
Uh, Mary Cassatt loved showing bounce light, loved showing reflected light coming in the faces, and this is also a triple complementary harmony, as is this, and in this case they are paired again, blue and orange, red and green, and then a very subtle yellow and violet back here. It's not chaotic, this is actually a very well-managed version of this idea. 